enemies of the mind you've got to battle with in the summertime. One is pessimism, which tries to get you only to see the negative side. Of course, there's a negative side. Life is part negative. What else is new? If the glass is half empty, it is half empty. You say, well, I've been taught to see that it's half full. Well, sure, it's half full, but it's also half empty. I mean, can't you handle that? I mean, you know, that's not too difficult. But here's what pessimism would try to get you to do. Believe that it's only half empty. And when pessimism comes to your mind, you've got to educate pessimism because pessimism is stupid. Pessimism tries to get you to believe that it's only half empty. You've got to say to pessimism, you've never been to school, too dumb and stupid to know. Of course, it's half empty, but it's not only half empty, it's also half full. I'm asking you to be in charge. Be in charge of your own mind. Be in charge of your own destiny. You battle with your enemy in the summertime. In the summertime, you've got to learn to love like a mother, hate like a father, give life like a mother, nourish, take life like a father. Father says to whatever threatens his family, take two or three more steps toward this family and threaten them, you'll cease to exist. And the father, I kill. Do battle with your enemies. Now, it's also possible to love like a father and hate like a mother. I'm not saying that's impossible. Nothing more dangerous than an angry mother. I saw an article in a magazine a little bit ago up in Canada. It showed a man with some claw marks on his back, had his shirt off, big teeth marks in his neck. This man was out in the woods, had his flash camera, saw mama bear with a little cub, thought, oh, this is cute, took a flash picture. Mama bear takes unkindly to this flash picture, probably chases the man, catches him, almost kills him before somebody rescued him. So, beware mama bear. Okay, love like a father, hate like a mother, give life like a mother, take life like a father, or however you want to arrange it. Just so you nourish your values, nourish your family, nourish what's valuable for you, nourish your organization, nourish your distributors, nourish your customers, take care of your responsibilities, feed, nourish. But then, I'm also asking you to do battle with your enemies, take sword to your enemies. Whatever is going to destroy those values, take sword to it. If it's worry, take sword to it. If it's threat, threaten back. You've got to be like your bloodstream. Good illustration. Red corpuscles to nourish like a mother. White corpuscles to fight and kill like a father. You've got to do some negative thinking. Can't just think positive. Thank God for white corpuscles that think negative all day. White corpuscles say, just show me some infection. I'll kill it. Whatever threatens this body in its future gets threatened. Whatever's got to kill this body gets killed. I'm asking you to take sword to your enemies, whether they're on the outside or whether they're on the inside. Protect your family, protect your future, protect your values. Love, nourish, but also do battle with whatever is out there to do battle with you. Take some courage from those that have been through the battle. They've given you their stories on this stage. They've been through it. They know what it's all about. Take some courage from that, and in the summer, do battle and nourish. Now, here's the last one. In the harvest time, number four, take your harvest and all that comes your way with full responsibility. Don't complain. That fourth season, complaining, I'm telling you, could ruin all of your chances. Complaining sometimes starts as an infection. If you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. Do battle with it. In the harvest time, reap your harvest without complaint. It's your crop. You sowed it. You either made the calls or didn't make the calls. You wrote the letters or you didn't write the letters. You were steady or you weren't steady. You did it or you didn't do it. You put together a good day or you didn't put together a good day. Take responsibility when the harvest time finally comes and say, Hey, it's my crop. Got to take responsibility for it. I do not complain. And then, here's the next. Do not apologize if you've done well. We offer no apologies when these winners that walked across this stage here go back to their communities. We offer no apology for making the kind of money they make because of the lives they touched and the people that they helped. No telling what would have happened if these people had not touched many people's lives, who touched many people's lives. When you go back to the community, all of you that were winners here, I ask you to go back with no apology because you've done your job well, and you've given good hands to everybody you've touched. You deserve all the money. 
Mr. Shaw put it to me this way. Jim, if you had enough reasons, you could do the most incredible things. I never forgot how he put that. If you have enough reasons, see, reasons will change your whole life. Mr. Shaw said to me, Mr. John, I think you've got plenty of intelligence. You've got plenty of talent. You've got plenty of ability. Probably what you lack is plenty of reasons. He said, I don't think your current bank balance is a true indication of your level of intelligence. I was happy to hear that. He said, I think you're much smarter than your present bank balance indicates. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter. But, of course, my first question was, well then, why isn't it bigger? And he said, you don't have enough reasons. You got enough intelligence, but not enough reasons. So, see, reasons can change your life. Here's what else I found out. Reasons come first, answers come second. You don't get the answers to do well until you get the reasons. Life has a mysterious way of hanging on to all the answers and only gives them up to the people that are inspired by reasons. So, reasons make the difference in how your life works out. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? Let's go through a quick list called reasons for doing well. First is personal reasons. Some people do well for recognition, some for respect, some for the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. Those are good reasons. I have some millionaire friends that keep working 10, 12 hours a day, making more millions, and it's not because they need the money, it's because they need the joy, the satisfaction, and the pleasure that comes from being a constant winner. And see, it's not just the money anyway, it's the journey, not the money. Once in a while, somebody says to me, boy, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. That's probably why the good Lord sees to they don't get their million, right? They quit. Okay, next is family reasons. Some people do extremely well for other people, and that's powerful. Human beings can greatly affect each other. Sometimes, we will do things for somebody else that we will not do for ourselves. We are made that way. I met a man one time who said, Mr. John, to do all the things I want to do with my family around the world, he said, I've got to have at least a quarter of a million dollars a year. I thought, incredible, could a guy's family affect him that much? And the answer is, of course, how fortunate are the people that find themselves greatly affected by somebody for personal achievement? And we are affected. The writer of a recent psalm said, if not for you, the winter would hold no spring, couldn't hear a robin sing, I just wouldn't have a clue if not for you. So, we can be affected. That might be one of the most stimulating reasons to do well, finding somebody. When Andrew Carnegie died, the wee little Scotsman that built the big steel industry, when he died, they opened up his desk, and in one of the desk drawers, they found a slip of paper. On that piece of paper, Mr. Carnegie had written his goal for his life, and he wrote it when he was in his 20s. And on that piece of paper, it said, I'm going to spend the first half of my life accumulating money. I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. What a goal. He got so inspired by that goal that the first half of his life, he accumulated $450 million, and the last half of his life, he gave it all away. Good question tonight. What's got you turned on? What's got you bummed out of sight to get up early and stay up late and hit it all day? Next question. What's got you turned off? When I found the answers to those two questions, my life exploded into change. I finally found out what had me turned off, and I got that cured, and then I got me a long enough list of reasons to turn me on, and once the lights went on for me at age 25, they've never gone out. I've fallen out of the sky a few times, but I've never lost that drive to make something unique out of my life. See, reasons altered my whole life. Now, there's another list of reasons called nitty-gritty, hard little reasons. Sometimes those little reasons are the most powerful reasons that can change your life. Sometimes it doesn't take much. I now carry several hundred in my money clip. It's only a few hundred, but it was one of those reasons that turned my life around. Just before I met Mr. Shaw, I heard a knock at the door. I go to the door, and there's a little girl standing there, about this tall, selling Girl Scout cookies. And she gave me one of the finest sales presentations I've ever heard, special deal, several flavors, this whole package of stuff, two dollars. And with a big smile, she very politely asked me to buy, and I wanted to, big problem, I'm broke, I don't have two dollars. 
And to this day, I can remember the pain and the embarrassment. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I've been to college, I'm working, I'm 25, I don't have two dollars. And I didn't want to tell her that, for some reason. So, I did what I thought was next best. I lied, too. I said, hey, look, I've already bought lots of Girl Scout cookies. I still got plenty stacked in the house, which was not true, but it seemed to get me off the hook for the moment. He said, well, gosh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, and she went away. When she left, I closed the door, and that was the day I said to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I've had it with lying, and I've had it with being broke. I'm never going to let this happen to me ever again. I promised that day I would work as hard as possible and would always carry plenty. It took me a little while, but now I do. It was one of those reasons. And I guess I carry plenty for two reasons. One is the way it makes me feel, but also in case I bump into another Girl Scout selling cookies, right? I'm ready. Let me give you a good philosophical phrase. All values must be won by contest, and after they've been won, they must be defended. You say, wow, you put a pretty heavy task on us. That's what life is all about, a pretty heavy challenge. We don't give large trophies for small effort. If you want to win, win high health. If you want to win high wealth. If you want to extend your reach in touching people's lives, you've got to engage in some of these extra powerful disciplines. One is to secure the territory by vigor and the other is to defend it with equal challenge. Life was designed not to give us what we want, not to give us what we need, but life was designed to give us what we deserve. Every value in life must be paid for, and those that pay are the ones that get it. It says, those that give, receive. Someone says, I wish to receive, I wish to receive. You don't have to concentrate on receiving, just become a good giver. It says, those that search will find. Someone says, well, I need to find some good ideas to help change my life for the future. Then, to find good ideas, that doesn't come because you need them. It comes because you search for it. If you want good ideas, you've got to go after them. You've got to go to the class. You've got to go to the workshop. You've got to go to the training. Go to the book, right? You've got to go to the journal, right? Go where good ideas are being taught. Go search, searching. Go looking because good ideas are not going to be wasted on those that are not seeking, searching, well prepared. Get going, that's the key. Some people are ever learning, but they don't put it into action. They don't really take the action. It's like the man who keeps bringing materials to the building site and never builds anything. He keeps bringing in the sand and the gravel and the windows and the doors and the roofing material, and he just stacks up all these supplies, but he never builds anything. See, if you do that long enough, fairly soon, they'll come and take you away. You've got to do something with what you've learned. You've got to take action. You've got to get going. So, that's one of the most important things. But learn how to design your days. How to design your weeks. How to design the months so that you take the proper action to get the proper return that you're looking for, whether it's economic or personal. Get going. It's a major key. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. If you change, it'll all change. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. Take responsibility for yourself. Take personal responsibility. You can't change the circumstances or the seasons or the wind, but you can change your reading habits. You can change whether or not you go for the skills. Burn the midnight oil. Turn yourself around. Multiply your value by two, three, five, ten. That you've got charge of, that you have control of. If you want your life to change, here's the source of it all. Ideas plus inspiration. The good news is, ideas are not that far away. I've got an excellent phrase for you to consider, one that will serve you well for the rest of your life. Everything you need is within reach. The ideas you need for life change or business change are within listening reach. They're within reading reach. In fact, there's probably a library not too far from you. The problem is, most people pass by libraries, very few walk in. Andrew Carnegie set up all these libraries across the country thinking everybody would stop in, but no, almost everybody drives right on by. Do you know how many people own a library card in the United States? 3%, and guess how much they cost? Nothing, the ideas are within reach, but here's the key question, who is going to reach? 
There's a simple biblical phrase that says, if you seek, you will find. But it's very important to know that finding is reserved for the seeker. We don't find what we need, we find what we search for. If you will search, if you'll try, if you'll go, if you'll listen, ideas are within reach, and ideas are life-changing. There's nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. A business idea, a social idea, an investment idea, a good health idea. All you need is a specific idea to make an impact on your life. Ideas can help you gather treasure, gather equity, and gather wealth. Ten years from now, you can be right where you are now, or you can be in a new place. The difference between now and then could be significant in terms of money, lifestyle, treasure, and equity. In 10 years, you can enjoy an incredible life if, right here and now, you make a small change in your thinking to start you on the journey. The key is to start right now, gathering the ideas and making the changes that will take you further along this new road. Ideas can change your life, and sometimes, all you need is just one more good idea in a series of good ideas. It's like dialing the numbers of a combination lock. After you've dialed five or six numbers, the lock may not come open, but you probably don't need five or six more numbers. Maybe you need just one more number, one more idea. Maybe a seminar or a sermon could provide it. The lyrics from a song could do it. The dialogue from a movie could do it. Conversation with a friend might do it. If you keep your eyes and ears open, you'll find that one last idea you need. Once you find that idea, the lock comes open, and there's the door for you to walk through. Just one more idea, no matter where you get it, may be all you need to open that door of opportunity. If, however, the lock still doesn't open, you may be lacking inspiration. Who knows why some people are inspired and some are not. Some people find a great idea and turn it down. Some people say that it costs too much. Some people say that it's going to take too much time. Some people are too busy. There are a lot of different reasons why some people are inspired to take advantage of a good idea while others pass it up. I call it mysteries of the mind, and I just leave it at that. There are some things I don't try to figure out. Some people buy, and some don't. Some go for it, and some don't. Some change, and some don't. And if you've been around for a while, you can usually spot those who don't take advantage of a good idea. A man asked me, how come all this stuff goes wrong for me? I say, I don't know. The most I've been able to figure out is that those kinds of things always happen to people like you. I'll bet he's one of the ones who don't take advantage of good ideas. If he continues on that path, he'll probably never find the right combination. That honor will always fall on the ones who do, like you, the consistent, disciplined, purposeful, constant search for knowledge. It's where the life-changing ideas are. Pursue knowledge with high expectations. Spend the money, time, and effort. They're all investments, but the payoff is so great it's hard to compare the cost to the reward. First is the money. Set up an educational fund for the programs, the books, the lectures, the seminars, and the videos you need for a constant flow of ideas and inspiration. Take a portion of your income each month and set it aside to invest in the search for knowledge. Remember, the best money spent is the money spent to cultivate the genius of your own mind and spirit. Make sure you don't spend more for frivolous comforts and conveniences than you do for education. The money is a small price. The promise is unlimited potential. The next investment is time, which is an extremely valuable expenditure. It's one thing to ask someone for their money, but to ask them for their time is a much more significant request. Knowledge takes time, precious time. The time you spend is irreplaceable. You can get more money, but you can't get more time. However, life has a unique way of rewarding high investment with high return. The major investment of time you're making now could be that small fine-tuning you need for major accomplishment. Last is the investment of effort. There is a great deal of difference between casual learning and serious learning. Learning that opens up the whole mental and spiritual process is truly an investment in effort, and this effort is the investment that opens the floodgates of ideas that can work their magic for you in the marketplace. So, don't hesitate to ask you to spend in a deliberate and consistent fashion the money, time, and effort required to reach your goals. These are the investments that turn on the lights, sharpen the focus, and start turning your wishes of wealth and happiness into reality. The second way to learn is from other people's experiences. 
Remember, you can learn from other people, whether they have done things right or wrong. You can learn from the negative as well as the positive. The Bible is such a great book because it is a collection of human stories representing both sides of the ledger. Some human stories are called examples, do what these people did. Other human stories are called warnings, don't do what these people did. What a wealth of information, knowing what to do and what not to do. If your story ever gets in somebody's book, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. There are three ways to learn from other people. The first is to listen to the programs and read the books by and about people who have accomplished great things. All the successful people around the world I know and work with are good readers. They are driven to read because they just have to know. It's one of the things they all have in common. Here's an excellent phrase. All leaders are readers. Successful people also listen to audio programs, especially while they're in the car or during other times when they can't read. Programs can help all of us easily pick up new ideas and skills. Did you know there are programs and books on how to be stronger, more decisive, a better speaker, a more effective leader, have a better effect on other people, become more loving, develop a more winning personality, get rich, develop persuasive influence, become sophisticated? And people don't want to utilize these resources. How would you explain that? Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and told the world how they became successful? And most people don't want to read or listen to them. How would you explain that? They're busy, I guess. They say, if you work where I work, you'd know that by the time I struggle home, it's late, I've got to have a bite to eat, watch a little TV, and go to bed. I can't stay up half the night and read. Imagine someone who is behind on his bills. He's a good worker and very sincere. Unfortunately, you can be sincere and work hard all your life and wind up broke, confused, and embarrassed. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good reader and a good listener. You don't have to read or listen to educational programs half the night, although if you're broke, it's a good place to start. All you need are just 30 minutes a day, that's all. Stretch it to an hour if you can, but set aside at least 30 minutes to hear or read something challenging, something instructional, at least 30 minutes a day, every day. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes. You can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some ideas, examples, and inspiration. There's a biblical phrase that says, man cannot live on bread alone. The most important thing, aside from bread, is words. Words nourish the mind. Words nourish the soul. Humans have to have food and words to be healthy and prosperous. Make sure you have a good diet of words every day. And remember that to properly feed the mind, you must maintain good balance. Don't just read or listen to the easy material. You can't live on mental candy. With good books and programs, you can tap into the treasure of ideas. And if somebody has a good excuse for not tapping into the treasure of ideas for at least 30 minutes every day, I'd like to hear it. You wouldn't believe some excuses I've heard. Don't make the same mistake. Invest the money. Get the programs and books. The best money you can spend is money invested in your self-education. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to investing in your own better future.